Honorable Jankelstein, are you here? Good morning, Speaker. I am present, yes. Morning. <clears throat> Honorable Van Fieren. Morning, Speaker. Yes, I am present. Uh, I also would just like to say that Honorable Gagao fell, fell sick yesterday. And Speaker, just um, to comment on what you said earlier in this meeting, um, I agree with you, but unfortunately this meeting was postponed three times without any reason why. So it is difficult then to plan your week and, and ensure that you are always available. So just to, to tell you that we were available Tuesday for a formal sitting, all of us, but unfortunately it was postponed three times. Thank you. Speaker, you're not audible. Honorable Mr. Speaker, you were un unaudible for about a minute there, so we don't know what you said. Ach, wat een frustratie toch? Roep niet mijn naam wat ik antwoord. Members, we will proceed. We do have the quorum. Let me welcome uh, all of you, honorable members, <clears throat> and uh, just a few announcements uh, to announce that we have the acting chief whip uh, of the ANC, uh, honorable Tabo Meko, and uh, we also have uh, the acting uh, deputy secretary, Meko Ni Sifo, uh, who will be assisting uh, the Secretary uh, Ndadema Chak. Honorable members, we proceed with Rule 34. Uh, but before we proceed to statements by members of the Executive Council and members of the Legislature, I wish to remind the House of Rule 34 of the Standing Rules and Orders. Accordingly, 20 minutes will be allocated for the whole duration of statements by members of the Executive Council to raise matters pertaining to their portfolios, which need to be brought to the attention of the legislature. A statement from a member of the Executive Council must not ex exceed five minutes. Following the statements by members of the Executive Council, a member of members of each of the parties may comment on a statement by a member of the Executive Council for not more than three minutes per party commencing with the official opposition and followed by other Parties in members order of the of Executive their Council, a member of members in of their, each of the parties in the House, may comment on the statement by a member of the Executive Council for not more than three members minutes of the Executive per Council. Are there any statements? <laughs> Honourable MC Brown. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Um, good morning, members of the pro provincial legislature and all <clears throat> listeners and viewers. In Parliament on the 11th of November at 2 p.m., 
All documents relating to this statement will be provided online as soon as the minister starts his speech. Um, information and budget tips between now and then may still be provided on the link on National Treasury website. Similarly, Honourable Speaker, Provincial Treasury in Council with the Executive Committee will also um, provide an adjustment budget subsequent to the medium-term policy statement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable MC. Any other statement, Honourable? Or comment by members? <coughs> None. Honourable members, we proceed to Rule 35. Statements by... That statements by members shall not exceed three minutes per member and matters to be raised must be of public importance. At the conclusion of statements by members, a member of the Executive Council present may be given an opportunity to respond for not more than two minutes to any statement directed to that member of the Executive Council. A maximum of five members of the Executive Council may be given an opportunity to respond to members' statements. Are there any statements, members? Honorable uh, Muleleke. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and, and uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Members. Honorable Speaker, for the purpose of the business of, the, of their house, allow me to brief the house with the development of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. The Department of Public Works and Infrastructure remains central to the development of and implementation of infrastructure for all government departments in the province. The department has been efficient in uh, utilizing infrastructure development as a central pillar to uh, mitigate the underdevelopment, inequality, unemployment, and poverty. Honorable uh, Speaker, the outstanding challenge in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure uh, is the allocation of maintenance is not sufficient to complete the entire maintenance need and if there's insufficient cash flow of contractors seems to be an uh, ongoing on most uh, projects. Honorable Speaker, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure is successfully transforming the property industry with the need to improve the patents and ownership. As the custodian of the government property in the province, the department is utilizing a credible assets register that uh, invoke good practice and the due diligence. Uh, the severe economic intercession has placed an added agency on the end on us to in navigate a new normal where the Department of Public Works Infrastructure, together with Infrastructure South Africa, with which falls under the embedded of DPWI, is able to partner with the private sector in the invest, investment and implementation of social and economic infrastructure that will facilitate growth in the in a workable and a purposeful way. South Africa Infrastructure Investment Plan and the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan have accordingly been developed with infrastructure being the main driver in sustaining the economy. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, the Department of Public Works has Remarkable, done great exploit and continue to size every moment, exhausting themselves and disposal for the sake of our people. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. 
Is there any other statement, Honorable Acting Chief Whip, Honorable Meko? Speaker, thank you very much. The African National Congress uh, uh, wishes to appreciate that our country joins the ranks of over 142 countries across the world and manage to hold elections amid the global COVID-19 pandemic. Our six local government elections were indeed peaceful, free and fair, despite the hiccups. We further want to say that uh, these 2021 local government elections have been amongst the most difficult elections that the ANC has ever contested, precisely because the turnout in particular has been disappointing in part as a result of the objective conditions of COVID-19, of the weather, the elections being on Monday, and the logistical issues, as well as the spectra of load shedding during the week preceding the 1st of November. However, it is in the main an unambiguous signal to the ANC from the electorate, the low voter turnout, especially in traditional ANC strongholds, communicates a clear message. The people are disappointed in the ANC with the low, slow progress in fixing local government, in ensuring quality and consistent basic services, in tackling corruption and greed. People are happy with the renewal of the African National Congress, and therefore our nation's mission in, in building a better life for all will be realized. Speaker, the ANC has heard this message loud and clear. And we want to indicate that we are more determined than ever to do and to be better. We will honor the mandate we have received and the pledge we made to our citizens. We are determined to improve service delivery, accountability, as well as to build better communities, improve basic services, and to provide uh, safety to our people. These results and the turnout is a message to our movement to shape up or ship up. To look at the overall picture that is emerging from the results completed, the ANC maintains its national footprints across the country. We remain the leading party nationally and in the majority of districts and many municipalities, and our, our commitment remains unequivocal. We'll continue to serve our people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Meko. Can I request the members on the virtual platform to make uh, their mouth? Any other statements? Any responses by members of Executive Council? <clears throat> None. Thank you, Honorable Members. We now proceed to reports by portfolio committees in terms of Rule 32F. The first report is from the Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance, Traditional Affairs, Office of the Premier, and Legislature to the Free State Legislature. And it is as follows. One report of the Portfolio Leading Committee on Cooperative and Governance and Traditional Affairs, and many municipalities. Office of and the our, Premier and Legislature with regards to the State conducted. Legislature on the local and it government. is as follows. Municipal One, Systems Amendment of Bill, the Portfolio Leading Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Before we proceed, our, Premier, our I wish to inform the House that the title of this report has been published on the TAC and a copy of the report has been distributed to honorable members in accordance with the rules of virtual sitting of the House. Reports published in the TAC are deemed to be tabled in the House. Honorable Chairperson of the Committee, Honorable Smith. Um, honorable Smith, come to the podium.
and I will speak up. Uh, I ask that we table this report now, please. When does the Honourable Member propose the report to be considered? Now, Honourable Speaker. Any discussion, Honourable Members? None. Any objection? None. Approved. The Honourable Member may address the House on the report. Good morning, all the members and support staff. Honourable Speaker, the Premier, Honourable Members. The Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance, Traditional Affairs Office of the Premier and Legislature held public hearings on Local Government Municipal Systems Amendment Bill, B2D, 2019. These hearings took place 13 to 15 April 2021, right through the Free State Province in all the regions. Adhering to COVID regulations, these hearings were conducted with 50 stakeholders physically present and others joining through a virtual platform. The committee invited the following members of the public, unions, political parties, South African Local Government Association uh, in the Free State and COPTA. We also uh, allowed others who were interested in such hearings to also join us. The, the pre-stated uh, House of Traditional Affairs were also included in that list. These participants were individually invited and by media adverse. The purpose of the bill was clearly highlighted and documents circulated among all members. The public hearings were held as follows. 13 April, Harry Smith, Intabazwe Indoor Centre. 13 April, Edinburgh, Palladi, Petlu Hall. Uh, 14 April, Kronstadt, Allen Rodenbach Civic Centre. Also on the 14th of April, Wurtavo, Oneni Hall. And the 15th of April, Wepena, Kubing Hall. I apologize for pronouncing wo uh, the, the, the words wrong, if so. All the meetings were scheduled to start at 10 o'clock. The overview of these hearings are also clearly set out in the documents presented to the Speaker and to this House. The committee are satisfied that, the consulting, uh, that, that we consulted wide enough and therefore voted in favor of this bill. B2-D 2019. Thank you, Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members. What does the Honourable Member propose? Uh, I propose that this bill is being accepted and adopted by the House. Any discussion, Honourable Members? No discussions, Honourable Speaker. Any objections? None. None. Approved. Thank you, Honourable Members. The report of the Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance, Traditional Affairs Office of the Premier Legislature as tabled is hereby adopted by the House. The second report is the report from the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural Economic Development, Small Business, Sports, Arts and Culture, to the Free State Legislature and is as follows. A report of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural Economic Development, Small Business, Sports, Arts and Culture with regard to the public hearings conducted on National Forest Amendment Bill B11-D 2016. Before we proceed, I wish to inform the House that the title of this report has been published in the TAC and a copy of the report has been distributed to honorable members in accordance with the rules of the virtual sitting of the House. <clears throat> the report published in the TAC are deemed to be tabled in the House. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Khadebe. Uh, speaker. When does the honorable member propose the report to be considered? Now, Speaker. Any discussion, honorable members? Approved. 
The Honourable Member may address the House on the report. Uh, thanks, Speaker, uh, for the opportunity. The purpose of the amendment of the National Forest Act of 1998 is to provide a clear definition of national forest and woodlands. There's also an element of trusteeship of forest resources to increase promotion and enforcement of sustainable forest management. We have conducted public hearings in all the districts and metro from the 15th of September 2020 to the 18th of September 2020. And uh, during the hearing, there were several inputs made. We have also received written submissions from the National Department of Mineral Resources, the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, and the Department of Economics, Small Businesses, Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs. The committee voted uh, speaker in favour of the bill. I thank you. What does the Honourable Member propose? That the report be adopted by the House. Any discussion? None. Any objection? None. No objection. None. Approved, uh, honourable members, the report of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural, Economic Development, Small Business, Sports, Arts and Culture Committee, as tabled, is hereby adopted by the House. Thank you, honourable members. Um, honourable members, we move to questions for oral reply. And I've been advised that the questions that were submitted to departments according to Rule 55 to 57 have been responded to. Honorable members, we then move to motions. The first motion in terms of Rule 61 to 63 of the Standing Rules and Orders is the election of the chairperson of committees. We now proceed to motions. The secretary shall read. Motion one. That leave be granted for the House to elect one of its members as chairperson of committees of the Free State Legislature. Any discussions? None. 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 Any objections? None. 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 Approved. Thank you, honorable members. I will now afford honorable members an opportunity to nominate one of the honorable members of this house to become the chairperson of committees for the Free State Legislature. Any nomination? Honorable Acting Chief Weaver. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I am rising to nominate Honorable Khatebe to be the Chair of Chess of the Free State Provincial Legislature. Thank you. Any second to the nominated name? Honorable Deputy Chief Whip. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I second uh, the Honorable Chief about the nomination of Honorable Hadi to be the 18th. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I second uh, Honorable Chief Whip, 18th Chief Whip, uh, to nominate Honorable Hadi uh, to be a uh, 18th uh, Chair of Chairs. Thank you, um, Honorable Member. Uh, but just to correct, uh, for the sake of Hansat, it's not acting. It's the chair of chairs. We don't have acting in terms of our rules. Um, thank you for that second um, We Is there any further nomination? None. Honorable members, I'm going to request the honorable members 
uh, to pronounce themselves those who support the name and uh, those who support the nomination of Honorable uh, Hadebe may raise their hands. Thank you. I will then go to the members on the virtual platform and I will call their name, they will pronounce if they support and they will pronounce if they are not in support of the name of Honorable Khadebe. Uh, Honorable MEC Kabati. I fully support uh, the name uh, speaker. Thank you. Honorable MEC Mahasa. Honorable Speaker, I also fully support the name of Honorable Hatebe as the Chair of Chains. Thank you. Honorable MEC Tsiu. I fully support uh, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Um, Honorable MEC Buluan. He did not indicate, right? Honorable uh, Mashinini. I support speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable MC Mohale. I support speaker. Uh, thank you. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Mapena. I fully support the name of Honorable Hadebe. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable MC Dukwan. Supported, uh, Speaker. Thank you. Honorable uh, Hadebe. Uh, in support, Speaker. Yes. Honorable Jungle Singh? I abstain, Speaker. You abstain. Honorable Van Furen? Thank you, Speaker. I abstain. Honorable Chachau is not here. Honorable Kleinans? Thank you, Speaker. I abstain. Thank you. Honorable Lituka? Uh, speaker, thank you. I abstain. Thank you. Honorable Peter Way. Speaker, I abstain. Thank you. Honorable... Uh, they did not indicate. So... Honorable members, uh, out of 18 members in the House, uh, the name of Honorable Khadebe has been supported by 14 members and five members in the house abstain. Thank you, honorable members. Abstain. Honorable members, uh, Honorable uh, Hadebe has been elected the chairperson of chairperson of committees in, in the Free State Legislature. Thank you. Honorable members, 
We move on to the next motion, and uh, the secretary shall read the motion. That leave be granted for the House to resolve on the voting mandates on the following bills. Local Government Municipal Systems Amendment Bill B2D 2019 and National Forest Amendment Bill 11D 2016. Um, Honorable members, the deputy speaker will take the chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and good morning, Honorable members. Uh, Honourable Members, now we proceed to Motion 2. The Secretary shall read the Motion 2. That leave be granted for the House to resolve on the voting mandates on the following bills, Local Government, Municipal Systems Amendment Bill 2, 2019, as well as National Forest Amendment Bill 11, 2016. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I move. Any discussion? None. None. Any objection? No, no objection. Uh, Honorable Speaker, may address the House jointly on the two final voting mandates. Over to you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable Chief Whip of the Free State Legislature, Honorable Members of this distinguished House. The House has just adopted the reports on both local government, Municipal Systems Amendment Bill B2D 2019, and National Forest Amendment Bill B11D 2016. Honorable members, the purpose of the first bill is to make provision for the appointment of Section 57 managers directly accountable to the municipal managers. This is a step in the right direction for a performance-based contract of Section 57 managers and municipal managers. The second bill is purposed for the creation of public trusteeship of the nation's forestry resources and to further promote and enforce sustainable forestry management. Honorable Deputy Speaker, let me assure this August House that both Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance, Traditional Affairs, Office of the Premier and Legislature, and Portfolio Committee on Public Works, Infrastructure, Roads, Transport, and Human Settlements, under the leadership of Honorable Smith and Honorable Khadebe, respectively, have complied with all processes related to the consideration of, the, of these bills. Briefing sessions took place, public participation processes were conducted, the reports were adopted by these portfolio committees, and the negotiating mandates were duly conferred. Honorable Deputy Speaker, as per the mandating procedures of Prov Provinces Act, I now place these two bills before this hybrid plenary to decide on the conferral of voting mandates. I thank you. What does the Honourable Speaker propose? That the House votes in favour of both bills. Any discussion? None. 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 Any objection? None. None. Approved. The Honourable Speaker shall now take the chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. Two seconds to fail. Honourable Mahasa. Mute, please. Apologies, apologies, Acting Speaker. Deputy Speaker. Yes, Deputy. Yes, my Deputy. Honorable Members, uh, now we proceed to deal with the orders. Um, we proceed to orders of the day, namely debate on public importance on the state of, municipali of municipalities, 
in the free state. I will request Honorable MEC Dukwana to address the House for 10 minutes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And good morning, Honorable Members. Thank you for this opportunity to join this debate on the state of our local government in this apex legislative platform of our beautiful province. This debate takes place a few days after we conducted local government elections exercise which was successful despite COVID-19 environment. Our country was able once again to deliver free and fair elections, minor challenges notwithstanding. This could not have been realized outside the full cooperation we received from different political formations represented here, and indeed the people of South Africa. South Africa is indeed a success story and it will continue to be so under the ANC government despite the numerous challenges we face, majority of which flow from the legacy of apartheid and colonialism. Our task as the Free State Legislature is to contribute in whatever way possible to tell this good story whilst also highlighting the difficult place as a province. So we start first by appreciating the victories we have registered and then proceed to confront our particular challenges. This is a complementary and contradictory approach that our beautiful province desperately needs to move forward. These local government elections which we have conducted are a demonstration that our democracy has matured and remains solid. It proves that all our democratic institutions including the electoral bodies, are strong and resilient. In terms of the constitution, our local government is a primary point of service delivery and the closest power platform that brings government closer to communities. In this regard, municipalities are a stage in which our people engage with government. It was a deliberate design of the ANC government to establish a decentralized and distinctive sphere of government to bring services closer to the people. And the core of our local government system is world-class local government legislation and policies. These local government legislative framework have assisted, have assisted to bridge the community divide which we inherited from apartheid. As government, we have made incredible progress and strides in delivering basic services to our communities, including water, electricity, sanitation, and refuse collections across all municipalities in the province. It is undeniable that the services we provide to communities are unsurpassed in the continent. Yet, despite our service delivery record, our local government still faces enormous challenges which need to be resolved with the necessary speed. It is clear that much still needs to be done to turn things around, especially in resolving particular difficulties in our governance system. Institutional capacity and widespread poverty across free state communities continue to undermine our efforts to strengthen local government as a strategic vehicle for building a better tomorrow for all our people. Majority of our municipalities are becoming unvi unviable as a result of low revenue collection rates, which undermine our capacity to pay service providers. The consistent water and electricity cuts during the recent elections provide evidence of these particular challenges, which often leads to disastrous breakdown of services. For instance, all our municipalities owe a total amount of 10 billion rents to ESCOM and various local board, water boards. Another uh, thorny area of concern that gives us anxiety is that majority of our municipalities are not driven by appropriately skilled personnel 
which handicaps our capacity to adequately respond to service delivery challenges. The widespread sporadic service delivery challenges are a reflection of serious challenges which are uh, decidedly compounded by prevalent instances of corruption in our municipalities. However, the 23 municipalities in the province are not homogeneous, and thus it would be a cross-exaggeration to paint them with the same brush. There are municipalities that somewhat have basic rights but need to push a little harder to, to be fully functional. And then you have municipalities which are almost dysfunctional, thereby needing ad hoc support from provincial government to turn the wheels. Finally, you have municipalities which are dysfunctional and have failed to survive using the human capital available at their disposal. It is in these last category of municipalities that we are undeniably struggling to effectively and efficiently provide services to our communities as we should. As honorable members might know, the provincial government has made various interventions to assist our municipalities. Reports about which we will be, uh, we will be making available to this house once we have thoroughly studied them. In the end, we are alive to necessity to intervene urgently in order to correct the degeneration in our system. Throughout these elections, the ruling African National Congress has made a genuine an acknowledgement of the challenges to which we have referred. And the core of our acknowledgement is an appreciation that in some instances, these challenges could have been avoided, but for lack of accountability by political and administrative leadership in our communities. The ANC further acknowledged that its declining electoral support compounded by the low voter turnout is an expression of deep-seated frustration as a result of service delivery failures. In this regard, the ANC government has committed to work harder to improve the performance of local government. The clearest demonstration of this commitment is the fact that it has, subject, it has subjected ward councillor candidates to a community voting process. We have made it compulsory for all our councillors to sign pledges in terms of which they commit to serve the people of our province. This we have done in order to return the ANC back to its real owners, which is the people of South Africa. There are key interventions that will be undertaken by the Department of Cocta to improve the overall performance of our municipalities in order to make them responsive to all service delivery needs of our communities. We will put in place systems to reverse the breakdown of trust between our municipalities and communities. We'll improve public participation, and ensure that ward councillors are thoroughly accountable to communities. Speakers have a responsibility to deal with issues of discipline among councillors. They must find a way to crack the whip as a matter of necessity. Traditional leaders also have a role to play in this regard, and systems shall be established urgently to make this a reality. Executive mayors will be expected to play a meaningful role in ensuring that IDPs are guided by the service delivery needs of our communities and ensure that there is strict adherence in terms of implementation. We will develop mechanisms through which to combat the general breakdown of ethics and values which should be driving officials who are charged with the responsibility of delivering services on behalf of municipalities. There shall be consequence management to neutralize officials who engage in corruption and general acts that stand service delivery capabilities of municipalities in our province. It is not Thank business you. as usual this time around. We will not compromise. Thank you, Honorable Thank you. Your time has expired. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable MC Brown. Alibongwe. Uh, 
Honourable Speaker, Mayor Zanele Sifuba, Honourable Premier Nassisin Tumbela, members of the Executive Council present, members of the Free State Legislature, special guests, viewers on all the virtual platforms, good morning. Honourable Speaker, before I begin, allow me to take this opportunity to thank every citizen in this province and across the country who have practiced their democratic right by voting on the 1st of November 2021. I'm standing here today as a servant of the people of the Free State Province who is deployed by the African National Congress. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity afforded to me by the people and the leadership of this province to provide a perspective on the performance of municipal budgets and finances as at the 30th September 2021. Honourable Speaker, in order to understand municipal finances, we have to provide a perspective of the impact that the economy has on the financial performance of municipalities. South, African, South Africa's economic growth has not translated into adequate job creation and the economy remains vulnerable to external shocks. Subject to the devastating effects of the pandemic, the national economy declined by 6.4% in 2020. With a population size of over 60 million, South Africa continues to struggle to overcome the social and economic legacy of apartheid. A large part of the black working class continues to be excluded from the labor market. Speaker, the persistent racial stratification and the differences in social, economic and health outcomes between population groups are partly due to the apartheid system the apartheid education system, which served blacks and coloreds very poorly. Speaker, our provincial economic performance indicates that the contribution of the tertiary industries have been increasing at the expense of our primary industries, industries while secondary industries have remained fairly constant. It should be further noted that over the past 10 years, our free state econom economy grew by 2.6% on average compared to the national economy of 3.6%. The outlook of the free state indicates all industries, including mining, are on a downward trajectory. The mining industry in the free state is worrisome. It is one of the few labor-intensive sectors that provide job, job opportunities for low-skilled laborers. However, industries such as transport and communications, finance and water are promising as they forecasted to growth of 3.4% growth of each. Given the national and the provincial outlook, Honorable Speaker, I thought we'd indicate some of the district econ economic growths as well. We find that Mangawun Metro and Fizili Darby's jurisdiction dominance over our provincial economy continues on the increase. Mangawun Metro... Its share increased from 33.7% to 34.7%, while Fezile Darby's share increased from 27.7% to 32.1%. Harib remains the smallest district at a mere 2.9%. And although Lejuleputsa is the third largest district, its contribution is still on a decline at 22.1% to 17.9%. Tabo Futsanyana's contribution is also on a decline from 13 0.7% to 12.5%. With that said, Honourable Speaker, our financial performance on municipalities are as follows. In terms of the consolidated revenue for all municipalities in the province, the aggregate revenue generated or billed amounted to 5.06 billion. That is 23.1% against a budget of 21.84 billion, not very far from its target of 25% which we anticipate at this point of the year. Congratulate those municipalities who are really pushing revenue. Service charges contribute the highest to the total revenue of 41%, followed by transfer and subsidies at 35% and property rates at 15%. In terms of expenditure, the operating expenditure on aggregate amounted to 3.78 billion, which is 16.9% against the total budget. Majority of expenditure relates to employee-related costs, totaling 1.45 billion, which is 38%, followed by bulk services, electricity and debt impairment at 27% and 9%. 
In terms of trading services, energy sources, which is electricity, and one of the challenges that we're experiencing in the province, reflected an operating deficit of 282.3 million. We can show that this is a pressure from a financial perspective for all municipalities. Water management reflected an operating surplus of 316.7 million. Wastewater management reflected an operating surplus of 133.7 million. Waste management reflected and operating services of 8 million and the surplus indicates indicator does not take the actual collection rate into account capital expenditure the total capital capital budget amounts to 3.19 billion capital expenditure is at 30 um, 57% of total expenditure. And then in terms of MIG and WSIG, we are looking at great expenditures, the Honourable Speaker. Cash flow for municipal uh, municipalities, we're looking at a closing surplus cash of 1.28 billion. Now, Honourable Speaker, reflecting on the economy and reflecting on the challenges and the critical performance of municipalities, we welcome the Cabinet's 2021 financial strategy for local government and specifically for the free state. Honourable Speaker, allow me to remind you that the and this audience that the recovery plan set in motion is by an ANC-led government. And it is with that that we know that we're dealing with a program on back to basics, the district development model, payment strategy towards water boards, ESCOM and third party payments, building a develop and developing a strong and capable human capital across municipalities. We're also looking at adjustments on the presidential youth employment intervention of 841 million across the country, changes to conditional grants, changes to the preliminary baseline for local government grants at 9.7%, municipal systems improvement grants and an indirect component of MIG, which will also be increased over the term. Honourable Speaker, the ANC thus supports the growth-led municipality adjustments to the above-mentioned programmes and the infrastructure grants in order to facilitate economic growth and employment. It is only the ANC-led government who will be forward-thinking, Honourable Speaker, to ensure that despite how difficult the current socio-economic environment is, we've already put strategies and plans that are derived to better the lives of the people of this province and our country. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable MC. Um I'm told uh, the EFF is not going to participate. Why, oh, yeah. Honorable Majak, you said I must pass, no? Honorable Msimang. Yes, speaker. I've been calling your name for the entire morning. You may address oh, I, for eight I, I, minutes. I, 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 was, I was struggling with connection, uh, speaker. But uh, I'm here, by the way. Continue. You may address the house for eight minutes. Let me take this opportunity to greet uh, speaker. Speaker, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let me take this opportunity to greet the leadership of executive uh, legislative arm of the state. Kidu Medisepo at the Beliba EFF, Kara Province of Rista, Takajan, give us like it to Atlantica Soot. Hello, Rongele Muraro, would you let me know what I 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 what African National Congress. corruption. But that about the number of corruption. Keep on remember we tell the Zimbabwe. Keep push we tell the Zimbabwe the African National Congress. We mean all over the table. Matter to ban in law. Keep matter atlan the African National Congress. O ban in the rule of law and some matter to ban in law. The baga baga lili. O ban in where the bill. Ba province lili where the bill. 
badi mas pale mba ANC ha bo gone because we ta bele ba province ke batho ba lore compromised so they can say anything le ha o senya ke ka ho fumanang auditor general report i'm sure uh, for a decade now auditor general anza bo ba ntwe le ngwe o re na le bothata ka hara for starter bothata ba teng gore ha ona accountability the system se a dinke lo hloho ndiye tswa fela di thutwa mo di bukeng empa ha ona motho lo ngwe re o dinke la hloho le ba ka ba ka ke ngwe le jwalo is because re telletswe pele ke bo eta pele be lore bo compromise bo tshaba ngwe challenger bo tleleka consequence management because how it's a jwalo le tsa how the scandal di kosa that's why re le mathating ana e re lo ngwe bona o free start mara ha o mametse ha to mametse honorable brown mc brown hansa bo o bua jwalo ka eh economic analyst o analyzer di figa ha bo i contribution ya province ke eng go etsa bonnete ba hore eh economy ya transform wa in a fundamental way in such a manner that it will benefit ba batho ba bo rona ba batho e benefite hantle province ka o lekana ha bo i lore province e ya ishe bile ka vision ya lona ke ha le na vision eh dintho dia i driver dintho dia i ketsa this thing this provision autopilot ha ona motho lo rong wa i driver ma thate ndre le tsena empa sa ntsano le jwalo ke batla o pointa ntate di kwana ntsa bua mo o na le mathata eh skoloto se se re se bona mo o thatha ba temba pele ko hore ba ba mba batho be lo re mba kolota mo ke batho be lo re indigent ke batho be lo re mba thola di social grant and but belo ngore ba thola di social grant bo thatha ba bona gore ba ka se gone go patala di tsebeletso the only thing ya o etsa ntho ko re skoloto se sa mofuto jwalo singwe jwalo ka irrecoverable irrecoverable debt se behellwe ka thuko eh se hlakolwe re tsebe ha re na skoloto se sa mofuto jwalo re qala on a clean slate challenge ngwe ya bo bedi re na le billing system e wrong re hlolwa le ke bo pep store hlolwa le ke bo accounts ba gona ngwe tse ba hore mang o kolota bokae o kolota bokae mas pale mon ha o tse ba halo hore mang o kolota bokae di koloto di tla o rwa patala skoloto ntse se kokomolo o rwa patala skoloto ntse se kokomolo e bontsa hore na le mathata a tshabeile ka hare o province ya free start o bana re so ka re lokisa billing system ya rona ntse e le mampempe la ke bua ka ona motsotso so ke tsona ntwe tse ntse tla me ile hore di attendwe di teteletso di lokisitswe empa ye ngwe ya te re na le batho be lo ngore mona province o thwe ba ya ba lo interview mara o thula o sheba batho ba ha ba interview ba asenya di masipale even that they do not get la batho bao ka ba ba ipitsa intervention a ke tsiri ke intervention what ke bona batho ba asenya di masipale ntsa ma lo sheba auditor general's report Auditor General's report o ere mo province e ntse di intervention e ka o fela teng ha o tlo o sheba fa ba hlolela lo submit di AFS document gore Auditor General ya fane ka audit opinion ke mathata re nang lona bo beke le beke ba ba lona ba beke le beke o beke beke nyena o masipaleng yeno beke nyena o masipaleng wa ba ke nyona o masipaleng wa mara ba senya di masipaleng tsena ka o fela ntwe ke ipotsa nyona ntate dikwana who's capacitating the capacitate because lona ena le mathata mara enwe ke ibone MEC e lo rong qeta o fela ona senya mas di masipala because instead de ora interview ona roba melao aba lo thishwa ke parliament o ro a senya tswa le ke mathata ne re thola re le ka ra ona and the executive ina lo ke di decisions tse e lo ring ha ena matla ho tsona ska ntse le bua gore puso ya ANC it le ka o divide the spheres of governance but but ba undermine the spheres of governance are your own people they long or ke di MEC ke lo ona ha pe jwalo ka executive we don't know really yet for your own personal interest or what but re na le mathata a tshabeile ha o thola o cheka ntse re na le mathata ona jwale a go ntong go kwa go me lo ngwe re ka nnete di pompo le fane ka tsona mare metsi ha a yo ka hara di pompo re na le bothata ba motlakase ka hare ho ho kwa kwa o so ka ndilukisa ona jwalo ona jwala re bua debt ya esco mo ntse nyolo ona jwala le kolota 5 billion before ba thuba ona tem police ba ya ba lo interview esco mo ne kolota shelter ya ne hampe ba ba ka tawetsa intervention e tlhuile mon mwene le teng hona jwa ke di ke 5 billion e tlotse ka di billion seng a dump ya bontsa batho ba ba senya ba ntse ba re ba ya ba lo interview na mo di masipale ke batho ba ba tlame ba shejwe ka dihloleleng mare e nngwe ha pere e bona di chelete di khutlela morago 
ha di tlamea go khutlela morao ha di kgolo go khutlela morao se di jewe eh ho accountelwa chelete long hore e se e jewe e sebeditswe mabaka e lo reng a ro ma chabe e funale any municipality at lamea be wan administration ke ma chabe o na le mathata chabe ileng ha mpe mo mo ma chabe mo eh ke mathata ana ana go boanela e lo re ratse botlotswa jong ho ile ga le go pare le EFF ra re go na le mathata mane municipal manager ko o a senya mo le o ipatala chelete tse fetang tsa 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 ntho o ipatala chelete fetang ya president ha o petwa MEC a fitla fumana re tabejwa ma re go bontsa rona consequence management le gona jwa le MEC e o tlwelletse motho o no resignile ona consequence management e encourage or batho ba ka senya ba qeta o senya motho ba itswela a itsama e ke mo mathata rona le a le nte ma re ska ha ke le katjo rena le bothata ba leadership ya compromised o tlwa o premier o ya fatse all of you you are compromised there's nothing ke ba la eng ka in a form of action o lukisa ntotsi tse jwa ha o ya man bo ga ripi man go na le mathata a o re challenge tsa ba sebetsi di jiwe ha di isu mo tla me di weteng ha di patalwe di e di so fed but di fella e se tshube mona ha o tse ba alo e tsala ke ntho tse le ditsebantse le tse ka ra le bone every time i let a speech o tlolo re no there's going to be a consequence management se re tlwa ya tse di thothokiso tsena tsa lona tseni ke nna kwa hore le start le sebetsa o bana ho ya senye ya ka ra free starter e se le ha ra tlobelele mo le mo iketse tsa ska ha ra ta wa ipapalla e mongwe tsa e west part wena ta de mpolisi ha se bese tsha ba fela se kolota ndi tshebeletso mare tshebeletso hape di kolotwa le kidi some of mecs ba kolota di masala ka no re tsala thank you your time le department di kolota di masala ona 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 mo manga o idwe ke tsona department tsona tsa free start le masala Honorable Msima, your time has expired. Thank you. Honorable MEC Koloi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, members of the Executive Council, Honorable members that are present today, officials that are here, viewers at home. Honorable Speaker, in just under 27 years of our hard earned democracy, we have provided homes in the free state citizens. Our growth from housing to human settlement in 2009 saw so as a change our approach in providing human settlement and using this to address sustainability goals like job creation, economic development, skills development, and overall improvement on the lives of previously disadvantaged people. Development of sustainable human settlement, Honorable Speaker, is a cornerstone of human and overall development. Where there are planned human settlements, we find social and economic development, reduce crime and overall, overall better living and positive growth in all forms. Without a house, a home will not have a functional society. Our focus, honorable speaker, aligned to national priorities and overall key strategic areas of the mandate of human settlement is anchored on the following. Informal settlements, upgrading programs, improved distribution of title deeds to ensure security of tenure, speeding up of delivery of housing through catalytic projects, also referred to as mega projects, faster provision of housing for our military veterans, establishment of a credible housing database and management of beneficiary database, ensuring empowerment of small businesses in the value chain through a focused small business mentoring programs where 30% of our budget will be targeted at this and buyers towards youth and women. 
focused attention on finance link individual subsidy for the community, competing in complete projects and anti the elder. But I said, Busa, Busaka or a gay buoy cut up by Enna, yadi incomplete houses, car, a province, yawana, ya free start. Eo elong hore na kwe fitile nri atiba hore esa le soba buroko. Ena kirata o sa lo sa speaker ke sa lo bele thoba no bo hlokwa hore dintho tse leng hore ha di a tsamaya ka nepo re se ke be rapata re di buwe jalo ka le fapha. Mo e leng hore go na le matlo a e leng hore ha ka ba fela ho tlwa ka 2008 mo e leng hore ba a hiba gona ba se ke ba fumana matlo a bona. Me ke rata o sa lo sa ke sa lo bele tho ana ga bo speaker ho go matlo ana a e leng a siwa ana le dikete tse le tshumele metso o le mo 11,000. But the department has made some strides in ensuring that it attends to such incomplete houses, of which current we are sitting with 8,994. But one is very much delighted and very much grateful for the intervention that has been done by the Honorable Premier and the Minister of Human Settlement, Memamoloko Kubai, with his national team including the president honorable speaker mo ilo matlo ana 8994 honorable speaker na kwenye tlang ya di ya di budget tsa gona ke mo ilo go matlo ana re tlwanga ka setotswana ho ba a hi ba gona ba khona ho fumana bodulo ba bona motsamaisi wa dipuisa ke ba tla o tla o yena hape honorable speaker le nna ke boe ka puo ya ka ya se sotho go ba a hi bohle ba mametseng ba khona ho utlwa ke hlalosetse sechaba ho engwe eo e leng hore ke soba boroko ho tabeng ena ya gona ya di title deed ho re di title deed tsa gona re phumana rena le bothata ka taba ya di dispute mo malapa a lwantshana empa re le le fapha honorable speaker re ntse bo nnete ba go re tshintshe ma ano a o ile gore na go nye fitileng ho no ntshuwa ka pa ho fanwa ka di title deed ho beng ba tso mo ile gore ka twe re nkile re le le fapha re yentse hore ba ba o ile gore ke di beneficiaries ka na go nye o ba tlo fumantswa di matlo a bona mo a hi ha ke na ka rantlo a kene a se anse a fuwa title deed ho qoba taba ena e le gore ke pharela ka puya ba di chaba ba e bolelang hore ke dispute mo e le gore re lokela gore re khotho le beng ba matlo mo e le gore e ba hloba boroko me ke rata o salosa honorable speaker hore re le le fapha hona jwale di title deed na go nya gona ya six administration di title deed se re seng re dintsitse re le le fapha ka batse ka ga matso a gona di feta di ketse le shome mo e le gore hona jwale ka morao ba di ho hlethwe di masipala le fapha la gona la human settlement le tlo ke ena ka ga di masipala ka programme ya gona ya title deed friday ho bona ba a hi ba gona re ba fa di title di tubane program ile ya jeiso ke taba ya covid regulations ho ba ni di title di ti haudin sa honorable speaker o lokela go o kopane le batho me re rata o le bua hore melao le melao ana ya covid 19 e thousitso ka bo e hlisitso mo e long hore re tlo khona hore di title di ti tsena tse fetang di ke tse le shome re tlo khona o dintsa le bo masipala ba gona o bane ke yona tshetso e o le fa phala gona la human settlement le yetsang ho thusa ba a iba go honorable speaker allow me to further to, to further proceed with the achievement that the department has uh, made strides with during our tenure since 2009 to date Around new housing units, we completed 57,957. Around house enrolled with NHBRC, we completed 54,062. New sites that were connected to basic and sanitation services as part of the integrated residential development program between 2012 and 2013 and 2020 financial year, it sits at 22,603, Honorable Speaker. Let me also indicate to the House, who are really for Papa, Honorable Speaker, the two sides of Maspala Sarod. Maspala wa metro, Luana Ru, two sides, Melon Horero, support towards their uh, accreditation. Honorable Speaker, further let me also indicate to the House that 500 and CRU units 
are also being approved. Ibile ramatuleng aure rekata ledi si ariu yuni si zarona eo elo renga buaka yana nichi nasa daga silver city ya lebo amata maisi walikusa. Thank you, Honourable MC. Honourable Cleanance. Thank you, Speaker. Honourable Speaker, there is only one thing worse than losing an election, and that is winning an election and governing badly. This was said by former DA leader Helen Ziller. Speaker, today we are considering the state of municipalities in the Free State. This is the right time to consider where our municipalities are today and as we enter the start of a new term for local government, how we can do better going forward. Since 2011, the ANC has been governing all municipalities in the province until this week when the party lost control of four municipalities, namely Nala, Metsimaolo, Mokaka and Malutiapufung. In these four, the party no longer has a 50% majority, giving them sole control. This means that in some councils, the party will have to enter into coalitions in order to govern, while in other councils, other parties will form coalitions which do not include the ANC, thus relegating the ANC to opposition benches. The ANC fell to 50% of the vote in the province for the first time since 1994. It is clear that there was a big stay away vote, while many new parties and civic movements and even independent candidates gained significant support. Speaker, the voters are tired. Basic services have collapsed in many places. The province is awash in sewerage and heaps of filth are strewn everywhere. Business and industry is struggling to go forward and local economies are stagnant. Jobs are being lost, unemployment and poverty are showing a frightening rate of increase. The common factor throughout the province is local government. No matter in which municipal area in the province you live, your life has become worse over the past 10 years. All local governments in the Free State have been under ANC control and all, all are either collapsed or on the brink of collapse. This is in terms of a report to Cabinet in June this year. These municipalities are unable to collect revenue, pay creditors, manage assets, deliver basic services, table credible budgets, submit audited financial statements or manage staff costs. The Auditor General reports that the financial health of municipalities continues to worsen with up to 50% of payments to the municipality not even reaching the municipal bank account. Speaker, it is a fact that the local government sector has been decimated while under ANC control. This devastation reached epidemic proportions in the past 10 years. And it is clear from the election results. Since 2011, the ANC has lost 21% in voter support from 72% and 487 seats in 2011 to 50.61% and 328 seats on Monday. That's 21% and 159 seats lost. Honourable Speaker, this has been a spectacular failure of governance. This party won universal support in elections and governed so badly and betrayed the trust of voters so badly that the voters have now rejected the party. It is so bad that the leader of the ANC had to travel around the province apologising to communities and begging forgiveness. Instead of serving communities and especially their own voters well, the ANC chose to rather enrich themselves, plunder municipal coffers, turn a blind eye to wrongdoing and squander their opportunity. The ANC has seemingly been on a suicide mission. Now the voters have spoken. The voters no longer believe the empty promises. There will be no more tolerance and forgiveness and another chance. Unless the ANC in the Free State immediately and ruthlessly clean up its act and starts acting like a responsible government, 
delivers basic services to communities and manages finances properly in terms of the law, I'm afraid the ANC is dead. Unless this former liberation movement realizes that it, it is in charge and must govern and grows the political will to show no tolerance to wrongdoing, mismanagement and corruption, it does not deserve the vote. Speaker, what can be done to turn our municipalities around? Firstly, political interference in democratically elected councils and administrations has got to stop. And the deployment of loyal cadres by central command based on their loyalty rather than their competence must be stopped. Speaker, councils must be held accountable by this legislature instead of the attempts to provide cover for incompetence and thieves. The MEC of Copter has a duty to provide support to municipalities through capacity building and oversight, and not, as we saw in Tswane, where political strategies determined that the metro be placed under administration. The Constitutional, has ru Constitutional Court has ruled that this interference in a functioning municipality for political point scoring under the guise of Section 139 was illegal. We have seen for the past five years how free state municipalities have repeatedly been interfered with, placed under administration, or the administration lifted for no valid reason. It's been like watching a game of musical chairs, with the MEC rushing hither and thither, trying to manipulate councils or control rogue ANC councillors to the extent that the NCOP have declared the intervention in Metsimaholo to be irregular and thus rendering the huge legal costs incurred by the MEC to be wasteful expenditure. Through the interference of the MEC, some municipalities ended up with two or three municipal managers at the same time. It has been a farce of epic proportions. And all of this with no oversight from the legislature. Where are the regular reports to the legislature on interventions as demanded by Section 139 of the Constitution? We, the elected representatives of the people, read on social media about municipalities placed under administration. This is utterly outrageous. Honorable Speaker, let us consider Malitia Pufung where the executive mayor from 2012 created an underworld of illegally appointed and ghost workers, illegal contracts were entered into, and a frenzied spending spree on events and illegal shipping beans brought the municipality to its knees. Illegal electricity vendors proliferated the mushrooms of rain. And the administration lifted by the former MEC, apparently with the purpose of allowing looting to resume. There is no other explanation. After the mayor finally was persuaded to die, he was appeased to the Pishanti for Women's Legislature. Honorable Speaker, let us see where these shenanigans in Maluti Fung have brought the ANC. In 2011, the ANC won the election in Malutia Pufung with 75% of the vote and 52 seats in council. On Monday, 10 years later, the ANC could only get 39% of the vote and 28 seats in council, leaving the door open for other parties to form a coalition to govern. In 10 years, the ANC in MAP lost 120,000 votes 36% in support and 24 seats. This is almost beyond understanding. How did the party think this would end? As I said, there is one thing worse than losing an election, and that is winning an election and governing badly. Speaker, the leader of the ANC, Cyril Ramaphosa, promised voters a new dawn and that the party will do things differently in future. It is hard to take that promise seriously when the quality of candidates is considered. In Malutia Pufung, an ANC councillor has just been elected who is being investigated by the special unit 
for multiple cases of intimidation, instigation, and sabotage. Clearly, the voters of Malutia were not impressed and rejected the party in government. People elect councillors who they believe can govern in such a way as to improve their lives. We need to ask ourselves, are we governing for the people? It's a chess board for strategic moves to stay in power. Municipalities directly affect people's lives every day. We must remember that. And our role as the legislature must be to protect residents from dysfunctional and collapsed municipalities. Our job is not to protect those responsible for such collapse. That is the ultimate betrayal. We as a legislature must do better in holding the executive to account every day and in every way. That is our job. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Clenans. Honorable MC Bulana, you may address the House for eight minutes. What in Honorable MC Bulan. Honourable members, it seems uh, that Honourable MC Polana is not there. I was told that he is present in the virtual platform, and unfortunately, I will have to move on. Honourable uh, MC Tukwan. You may address the house for six minutes. Raw, young lion, raw. Honorable Speaker. Yes, Honorable MEC, you may address the house. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, listening to the debate, uh, taught me some, some valuable lessons that uh, we have not been able to, as, as, as a people, to move away from party political point scoring. We are faced with a serious matter that we need to deal with. The ANC, as people are saying, has been rejected. The ANC has not been rejected. All of us uh, went to these elections, we are not guaranteed any seat. All of us uh, presented our own manifestos, and uh, none of these parties uh, received any majority. The ANC received most votes. It is correct that we have not received the votes as we did in the past. The voters clearly have not rejected the ANC, but they've, they've not accepted any other alternative party in these elections uh, and ensure that the ANC, believing that the ANC is the only party that has uh, a, a policies that are relevant and that uh, the, the message to the ANC is with the policies, the best policies that we have, match those with implementation and this is what uh, we are going to do. These other parties, despite this uh, these challenges that the ANC uh, faced did not master any uh, uh, you know, chance to take away from this organization. We are therefore humbled as an organization, and we believe that we have learned valuable lessons, and we are going to do our work and make sure that we deliver as uh, we have promised during the campaign. We have indeed taken note of the contributions made by various political parties 
represented in our legislature. There are points of convergence that relate to areas of focus that need to be strengthened to turn things around. We have also noted opportunistic political statements, which are not frivolous, which are not only frivolous, but also fail to add value to the process of rebuilding and transforming our municipalities. Of course, we have no intention to dignify such frivolous statements. We agree that we need to work harder as government to ensure that there is sound financial management and prudent financial controls to curb instances of malfeasance and corruption. We will establish a working group consisting of political and administrative aids, which will meet every time to pick up early warnings, warning signs and troubleshoot challenges as they arise. The department will work together with municipalities to ensure the administrative capacity is improved by recruiting dedicated and skilled personnel. We are exploring a possibility of establishing a revenue collection management office in the department to improve the revenue capacity in our municipalities. We will also be conducting roadshows to educate our community around the necessity to pay for services Honourable, as well as use services such as water yeah. and electricity to COVID. Honorable Dukana, can you please pause? Uh, Honorable Jankelstein. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Will the Honorable MEC take a question? No, Honorable uh, Honorable, Speaker. Yes, uh, Honorable uh, Jankelstein is not willing to take a question. Honorable Mashin, your hand has been up. I think it's a mistake because it's been like that for a while. Can you please lower it? Thank you. Proceed, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we need a planning system that requires municipal and provincial plans, including integrated development plans, to be translated into special contracts that are binding across years of government. Uh, we must overcome the twin challenges. This is what we must do. The twin challenges of corruption and lack of accountability in our municipalities. And uh, we believe that we, we require a resilient system consisting of political will, sound institutions, a solid legal foundation, and an active citizenry that is empowered to hold public officials accountable for us to overcome the twin challenges of corruption and lack of accountability in our society. We must be a, pro must be a province that has zero tolerance for corruption in which empowered citizenry have the confidence and, and knowledge to hold public and private officials to account in which leaders hold themselves to high ethical standards and act with integrity. Honorable Speaker, point of order, please. Um, what is the point of order, Honorable Member? Um, Honorable Speaker, I just want to know if it's in order for the MEC to stand here and mislead the House when he sat in a cabinet that was central to the corruption in the free state for many years. No, but that's not a point of order. It's your opinion on what he's saying, and you don't have a right to do that. You cannot have an, op an opinion on somebody else's address. That's not a point of order. Proceed, Honorable Member. Honorable Machinin, your hand is up. Sorry, Speaker, it's by mistake. I'm lowering it. Okay. Honorable uh, Dukwana, proceed. We must invest in preventative controls, which is uh, controls which are more effective than dealing with the impact of accountability failures, such as uh, financial loss, fraud and corruption, and the misuse of public resources and service delivery failures. The Department of COCTA intends to improve the monitoring, review, and oversight by senior officials, municipal leaders, and councils. We must effect consequences for accountability failures by creating an environment in which transgressions and poor performance are dealt with appropriately. I believe, Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, no municipality should fail to deliver services under our watch. We are only capable of developing a support program for municipalities to progress to better height. I challenge all honorable members in this uh, forum to abandon meaningless party political chants and neutralize this debate to fashion out an approach which will pave way 
for improved performance of our municipalities. The success or otherwise 